if you want to learn how to press gorgeous seaweeds into these wonderful patterns and learn about, about the seaweeds themselves, then you have come to the right video. Today, I'll be walking you through how to collect seaweeds, ID the seaweeds, and then turn them into these wonderful patterns. But before that, hit the subscribe button to not miss out on awesome marine content that I post every week. Now I'm collecting these seaweeds because the sandy shore at this time of year is absolutely full and chocolate of seaweeds and I will be taking such a tiny weeny small amount that hopefully it won't have any impact whatsoever. I highly recommend that if you are taking anything from any shores you make sure it's not protected. You do not take a lot of it, you only take the absolute tiny minimum amount that you need and you do it safely. There are also some rules with things like if you pick up a seaweed at a certain shore, do not move it somewhere else to wash it off. For example, if you're on holiday and you're picking up seaweeds in Scotland, you keep them alive, I don't know how you do that, or um, and you don't dry them out and you bring them back down south to examine them, that is a big no-no. There are species that live in certain places that we don't want to spread to different places. So if you're doing this, if you're taking seaweeds home and you are using them, make sure they are dried and processed in the area that you are in or and washed at the beach you were in to make sure that you are not transferring any creatures that won't that are going to be harmful to the creatures that you then go visit at your new spot. So I've basically just taken a jar from the kitchen and took it down to the beach, my local sandy beach, you can take it to a rocky shore, basically any bit of water that's connected to the ocean is going to have seaweed in and I'm just picking up the stuff that is kind of drifting in with the tide that's already loose and putting it in the jar and then we're going to take it back and I'll walk you through the ID of each species and how best to uh, press and preserve these gorgeous seaweeds for future use. literally surrounded by natural seaweed in its natural habitat and we should completely love it and you know be happy with where it is and just love the fact that you can stand in natural habitat and I am I really am but why is putting some seaweed in a jar so unbelievably satisfying why <laughs> it's so pretty everyone so we are now back with my absolutely beautiful jar of seaweeds i don't know why it's so pretty but it just is i can't believe how many species i found i suppose i was on the beach for about maybe an hour but um i was filming two other videos at the same time so i suppose the 10 20 minutes that i had to spend searching for seaweeds although i did look as i went 
we found an absolute ton. Now I haven't counted how many species we found, but during this video I'm going out and I'm going to be pressing all of them so I'll count them up as we go. There is definitely some gorgeous red, browns and uh, green seaweeds in there that I can't wait to see what they look like when they come out. So what we are doing today is learning to press seaweeds and um, I've done work like shaping seaweeds before I suppose so for a research project we needed to see the surface area and the shape of seaweeds and so I spent a summer helping um, as a research intern look, studying seaweeds and looking at that so to do that we used waterproof paper and kind of spread the seaweeds out and um, had to make sure they were all found out so that when we took pictures of them we could see all of the seaweed. It was a very tedious summer but it was fun and I'm hoping that the skill is pretty much the same except for this time I don't have waterproof paper which is like a plasticky type of paper that you can actually like write on draw on underwater. I do have watercolour paper which I've looked online is hopefully good enough to use for this type of thing and that's what's normally used. We are going to spread them out in this tray and I'm going to take you through and walk you through exactly how I'm shaping them. Normally the best thing to shape them with is two pairs of tweezers. Um, even better if you've got things like dissection tweezers which is a bit more just scientific. They come in pickier sizes and they're just easier to use. Um, one set of tweezers to hold the seaweed in place and the other to kind of move it into the position you want it to. I don't have that, I don't have access to tweezers, so what I've got is pens and paintbrushes. I'm hoping that maybe I can hold it down with a pen and use a paintbrush to kind of edge it into the right position that we need. So you want to fill your tray up with fresh water, it doesn't have to be seawater, just enough to cover the watercolour paper and the seaweed with a bit of wiggle room to kind of float things around and just make it easier for you to get the seaweed into the best position. Then once you've grabbed your first seaweed sample, you want to grab a bit of watercolour paper that you cut to size that you think is going to fit the kind of finished spread out bit of seaweed and you want to dip that in the water and kind of soak it and get it uh, nice and wet and saturated. Then either delicately lift or float the bit of seaweed over the top of the paper and float it in the water and you can start to gently kind of spread it out and get it into the position that you want. Now this seaweed is called lava, it's actually what the Welsh make lava bread out of, it's really smooth and silky texture, it's only basically one cell thick and it's really transparent. There are a couple of species of lava that um, you can kind of tell between but you don't really need to know the very specific species. If you do want to get down to like super specific species then I'll link to the video above where I talk about the best ID books and the best ID books for these seaweeds are the sea search books which can really help you um, kind of nail down the identification of different species but for this we don't need to I don't think we need to go into that super detail and hopefully you won't confuse lava with any other species because it's uh, quite distinctive. Now once you've got it in a position you're going to lift it out the water but you have to remember that actually um, it's going to move when you lift it out the water so kind of try and keep it in as much of position as possible by removing it nice and gently and then you can also kind of tweak the position of it when it's out the water and it's still a bit wet but this is uh, you have to do that delicately because you can change the shape of the seaweed quite a bit by accident and you'll have to put it back in the water and kind of start again. Now onto a thinner, more fiddly seaweed. This species is called Dictyota dichotoma and um, it's a brown seaweed and seaweeds to ID them are kind of split into browns, reds and greens and uh, so if you're looking to ID a seaweed it's best to kind of look at the colour as the start and this species can be thinner or thicker, you'll see a thicker version of it later on in this video and it kind of has um, lots of forked like fronds of the seaweed, they all kind of fork off and right at the end they have like two little um, bumps at the end of their fronds and uh, when it comes to these more fiddly seaweeds, especially this one which um, seemed to keep wanting to jump off the page, the paintbrush really came in handy to kind of 
delicately sort out all of those different you know branches of the seaweed and all, uh, make sure you're capturing all of the little details with the pattern that you're forming on the seaweed. Voicing descriptions of seaweeds is actually really difficult because there's so many species and so many variations and without seeing pictures it's really hard to do so uh, I'm going to try and say what the main ID features of each of them kind of are but really I think using this video to kind of look at the seaweeds um, when they're done at the end and going on my website which I have and also using the uh, ID books that I recommended in that video are really going to be the best way for you to get your hands on seaweed ID but if you have any questions then please leave a comment below and also let me know which is your favourite seaweed. Now this seaweed um, is being cleaned up a bit because there's lots of little seaweeds living on it and again that paintbrush is really good in just kind of getting rid of really delicately a lot of the gunk and muck that you can sometimes find on the seaweed and this one is a species of gracilaria and you can kind of tell that by the little um, dots or bumps that it has on the main part of the uh, the seaweed frond and then it has all these like tiny little branching lovely uh, pattern seaweed fronds coming off of like the main kind of stem area. This extremely long seaweed is Dunmontia con contorta. Again, pronouncing all the Latin stuff is, uh, I'm probably not the best at it. So I decided to kind of swirl it in a spiral. I thought it would look a lot cooler than it does. To be honest, the final one of this just annoys me. But I mean, who's going to have a bit of paper that's as long as this one? Which is pretty, pretty impressive that um, it grows that long and thin. Now you might have probably seen this seaweed before, sea lettuce ovolatuca is a really really common um, seaweed. There's actually loads of forms of ova and this one potentially could be one of the other ones, something like rigid sea lettuce or something else. But for simplicity I'm going with calling it just sea lettuce. They are this very thin, a lot like the larva but kind of green um, seaweeds and uh, they are found pretty much all around the UK. One of my favourite seaweeds here, um, Irish moss, and they have these kind of gorgeous red fan um, kind of shape. It feels um, a lot like the sea lettuce at the ends and then closer to the middle it gets a bit firmer and they kind of, it's thin again and kind of forms this really really lovely um, fanned out pattern when it's all spread out. This is another form of ova, but you can tell this apart from sea lettuce because it is much, much longer. This is called gutweed because, well, when it's all on the shore, it kind of looks uh, like a lot of guts. You can also see a tiny, wiggly little uh, crab wandering around the tree from this point onwards. Him and a shrimp both got into the jar, but don't worry, the shrimp and the crab will both return to the sea after the seaweed sorting session. <laughs> Sometimes the common names of seaweed give absolutely nothing away in helps in terms of IDing it, but I love this name, banded pincerweed. This is a ceramium species and really it has little pincers at the end of the seaweed and down this kind of the stalks of the seaweed they have these little lines that look like bands so they're quite easy to kind of tell. There's a lot of the ceramium species so I'm not going to go into trying to work out exactly which species this is but um, it's uh, still such a gorgeous pattern when it's done. This was such a delicate gorgeous little seaweed um, called bushy featherweed and you really really need a paintbrush to do this and even then it is difficult because it's just so fine and delicate to not hurt or break apart. It was also quite dense when all the, the fronts are on top of each other so I kind of had to split up the seaweed and um, kind of break off certain bits so that you can kind of get the details of each of the little gorgeous feathery fronds of this this seaweed. As far as I can tell by looking in the ID books, this seaweed is the same species that we found earlier of Dictoyota dicotoma, 
but it's just a much thicker version of the seaweed. And this just goes to show how difficult seaweed ID can be because depending on where the species grows and where the individual grows and all of these different things, there can just be lots of variations within the different species. So if something looks similar but doesn't look exactly the same then don't be surprised if it's actually that species because um, yeah there's just variation within nature. And if you can't ID the seaweed then don't worry in the seaweed book which has over 230 bits of uh, like descriptions of seaweeds uh, the small filamentous brown seaweeds they have just said that it's not within the scope of the book to be able to id and they're probably right which means you won't be able to id this without a proper microscope which i first of all didn't have to hand but also is it really worth the time <laughs> do we really need to know exactly what it is but this is a small filamentous type of brown seaweed and i just kind of wanted to include it because it is so just fuzzy and fluffy and just a different form of seaweed that we hadn't seen uh, in the other species. I think that was extremely satisfying and a load of fun. I'm used to it being super tedious when I, you know, when I was doing it as a, kind of in a more sciencey background, I needed to make sure it was perfect. You know, one seaweed could take me like a whole day just to like spread out, but because I'm not having to like fight the seaweeds, I can just make them look pretty rather than scientific. I really, really enjoyed it. And it only took me like an hour to do this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 11 species which is really really cool so now according to the online world we need to let these dry and press so i'm going to put water color paper over the top of them put them together and uh put a weight on top of them and we're going to leave them to dry and i'll come back tomorrow and uh fingers crossed we have some lovely dry seaweed that just looks as pretty as these do hi everyone uh future Elizabeth here with the power of hindsight. Now I made one crucial error at this stage, guttingly, and that I piled all of the seaweeds on top of each other with the with the wet watercolour paper with nothing in between them and put a brick on top. Now doing that, covering it with a wet, the other wet bit of watercolour paper, just, uh, well, <laughs> we haven't got the nicest uh, seaweed prints left. Some of them are too bad, but the, the vast majority have uh, disintegrated. So I went out and got some more seaweeds and have tried it again. And the, a better way is to either put a dry bit of watercolour paper on top and press it down. You do get some kind of like bits getting pulled off onto the other bit of paper but it's a lot better and a lot easier and if you're careful when you're pulling it off, that's great. Or if you don't care about the seaweeds not sitting completely flat, um, then just leaving them to dry in the air means that they're not gonna get damaged. So that's my recommendation, but I hope you've enjoyed the video. Follow all of the steps exactly the same and just don't do what I did right at the end. I made that mistake so you guys won't and enjoy pressing seaweeds and learning about seaweeds and just enjoying how beautiful they are because they are really, really stunning. Just not when you put um, wet paper on top. Rookie error. I'll see you next week for another video. Bye.